This is section 8.2, Areas in the Plane. Let's take a function, f of x, and let's draw it arbitrarily, and we'll just say that f of x is always positive. Let's take another function, g of x, and draw this one always under and always positive, so it could be a different function. Now what we want to try to do is find the area in between the two curves. Now what we can do is, uh, let's say we're trying to find the area between the two curves from a to b. Uh, we could take the area under f, all of the area under f, and we could subtract out the area under g. So we could subtract out all of this area right here. And what would be left is the area in between the two curves. That would be the integral of f of x minus the integral of g of x dx gets the area in between the two curves and that would be from a to b. Now what if we have a slightly different situation? What if f of x was always positive, so some arbitrary f of x, and the g of x was always negative? And then uh, we'll deal when they we'll deal with it when they cross the x-axis. But for right now, let's say f of x is positive, g of x is negative. Well, we'd have all of this area under f of x, and then we'd have to add on all of the area uh, under g of x, which is now going to be negative. But the nice part about this is if you make a minus on both, you're just fine. So let's say from a to b, the area under f was let's say 10 and the area under G was uh, happened to be negative 7, let's say. And you're going to do well, you're going to do integral from A to B, and it's the exact same thing, let's say, F of X minus G of X. Now the area is not going to be 3. I want total area between the two curves. Well, this would be 10 minus negative 7. And that's equal to 17, and that's kind of the that's the answer we want. It, we wanted the area, the total area in between these two functions. So the nice part about this is, no matter where the function is, as long as you do the top function minus the bottom function, you're going to get the right answer. Area between curves. If f and g are continuous, with f of x always above g of x, so there's clearly a function that's above the other one. Throughout a, b, then area between the curves, y equals f of x and y equals g of x from a to b, is the integral of f minus g. In other words, we're taking the top minus the bottom functions from a to b. So a equals integral of always top minus bottom. Applying the definition, find the area of the region between y equals secant squared x and y equals sine of x from 0 to pi over 4. Well, secant squared is always above sine of x, at least from 0 to pi over 4. So we're just going to integrate from 0 to pi over 4 of secant squared x minus sine of x dx. And the antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. We have tangent of x and then plus cosine of x. And we're integrating from 0 to pi over 4. The tangent of pi over 4 is 1, and then we have the cosine of pi over 4, which is square root of 2 over 2, and then minus, we have tangent of 0, which is 0, and then cosine of 0 is 1. So we have 1 plus square root of 2 over 2, and then minus 0 plus 1. So we really have 1 minus 1, and the answer is square root of 2 over 2. Now, that's kind of old stuff with the exception that we now have taken the top minus the bottom function if we want to find the area in between the two curves. Area enclosed by intersecting curves. When a region is enclosed by intersecting curves, the intersection points give the limits of integration. Area of an enclosed region. Find the area of the region enclosed by the parabola y equals 2 minus x squared and the line y equals negative x. We want to find out where these two graphs are intersecting each other. And uh, so there's the parabola and we got the line. Well this is a system of equations, so y is equal to negative x. We have negative x is equal to 2 minus x squared. We can just plug the negative x in for the y over here. Let's get these to the left hand side. We have x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. 
x, uh, what do we have, minus 2 and x plus 1 equals 0, so x equals 2, x equals negative 1. So these are intersecting at 2 and at negative 1. We want to integrate from negative 1 to 2. Now we're trying to find the area in between. The top function is the parabola and the bottom function is the line. We want 2 minus x squared, in other words the top function, minus the bottom function, so minus negative x dx. Well now we kind of turn it into an old problem. We know how to how to integrate. We have uh, the integral of 2 is 2x. We have minus 1 third x to the third. Now that's going to be a plus x. So we have plus 1 half x squared. And we're integrating from negative 1 to 2. Well 2 times 2 is 4 uh, minus 8 thirds plus 4 halves is 2, and then minus. We have negative 2, we have plus 1 third, and we have plus 1 half. Uh, so the common denominator is going to be 6. We have 24 6 minus 16 6 plus 12 6, and then we have plus uh, 12 6, and then minus uh, I need that to be 6, so 2, 6, and then plus 3, 6. Let's see, 24 minus 16 is 8, 20, uh, 32, 30, looks like 33, 6, which is 11 halves. So the answer is 11 halves, but again, we're taking top minus bottom, but in this case, we had to find out where these two graphs are intersecting each other. Example 3, using a calculator. Let's put the first equation in y1. We have 2 cosine x, so 2 cosine of x. And we'll put the other function in y2. We have x squared, whoops, that's not squared, squared minus 1. Let's graph in the standard window, the negative 10 to 10, and we'll see where the region, where the enclosed region is. So it's in between these two right here. Now we're going to have to find those intersection points. Let's zoom in though, so we can get an idea of, of what's going on here. And I like zoom box. It's one of my favorite zooms. So we'll uh, get the left top left corner here, and then we'll box in the area that's enclosed. Now these are both even functions, so there should be symmetry here. Uh, we can do this. We can do calculate. Uh, we want to calculate the intersection. And we have the first curve, the second curve, and we need to get over to where we think they're intersecting. Right there. Press enter, and we find out that the intersection point is 1.265. And we can go 4, 2, 3, 7. So they're intersecting at that x value, and we can integrate from 0 to 1.265.4237 and just double this. Now, the only reason I can do this is I know that both of these functions are even. The top function uh, turned out to be cosine. We have 2 cosine of x, and then minus uh, x squared minus 1 dx. Let's go to the home screen and we're going to plug this into our calculator. We have two times math, number nine, and uh, we have the first function, two cosine of x, and then minus x squared minus one. Our variable is x and we're going from zero to 1.265. 4237. And the answer is 4.995. Integrate with respect to y. Find the area of the region example 4 by integrating with respect to y. Finding area using subregions. Find the area of the region r in the first quadrant that is bound above by y equals square root of x and below by the x-axis in the line y equals x minus 2. So really we have the exact same problem. But what we notice is this line is to the right of the square root of x the entire time. So let's uh, 
let's find the integral with respect to y instead of x. Now what we're going to have to do is get all of these to say x equals. So y squared is equal to x if we square both sides. And then over here we have x equals y plus 2 when we add 2. Find an area using subregions. Find the area of the region R in the first quadrant that is bounded above by y equals squared of x and below by the x-axis in the line y equals x minus 2. Well, notice we have two regions. From 0 to 2, we are finding the area under just the square root of x. Notice how if we make the x-axis one of the boundaries, this line plays no role in the area from 0 to 2. We have the integral from 0 to 2 of just the square root of x dx. And then, once we hit 2, now this line is going to play a role, because now we have a top function, which is the square root of x, and a bottom function, which is the line y equals x minus 2. Now we're going to add on the integral from 2 to 4 of the top function, which is the square root of x, and then minus x minus 2 dx. Well, there it is set up. Now we just have to get the integral done. We have x to the 1 half here. If we add 1 to that, that's x to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. And we're integrating from 0 to 2. And then plus, uh, we have 2 thirds x to the 3 halves again with this square root of x minus 1 half x squared and then plus 2x. And we're integrating that from 2 to 4. When we plug 2 in, we get 2 thirds times 2 to the 3 halves, and we don't really need minus 0, plus we have uh, the square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 to the third is 8. So this becomes 8 right here, and then we have 16 thirds, minus uh, 16 halves, and then plus 8. We have minus, when we plug 2 in, we get 2 thirds times 2 to the 3 halves minus uh, 4 halves, let's go with 4 halves, and then plus 4. This one is going to cancel out with this one. And we have, uh, let's see, we got a common denominator. Well, we can do 3. Let's do this. We got 16 thirds minus 8 plus 8, and then we have plus 2, and then minus 4. So that's going to be 0. We have 16 thirds and then minus uh, 2, really. So we have 16 thirds minus 6 thirds, and that is equal to 10 thirds. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 2. The right function is y plus 2, and the left function is y squared. So we're minusing y squared this time and integrating with respect to y. That's going to be 1 half y squared plus 2y, and then minus 1 third y to the third, and we're integrating from 0 to 2. Let's plug 2 in. We have 4 halves plus 4, and then minus 8 thirds. When we plug 0 in, we'll get 0. Uh, we have, uh, let's say, uh, 12 6 plus 24 6 minus 16 6. Uh, 12 plus 24, that's 36, and 36 minus 16, that gives us 26, which is 10 thirds. Example 6, making the choice. Find the area of the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals x to the third and x equals y squared minus 2. We're going to use our calculator to uh, solve this one. Now, we have y equals x to the third, that's fine, we have y equals, but this one is not y equals. We have y squared is equal to x plus 2, so we add 2 over, and then we need to square root. We have plus or minus the square root of x plus 2. Let's go to the calculator. In y1, we can put x to the third. In y2, we can put the square root of x plus 2. Then in y3, we'll have to put negative square root of x plus 2. Let's graph these. There's the first uh, equation. There's the top half of the parabola. That's the plus, and then the bottom half of the parabola. Let's zoom in so that we can see 
the area that we're interested in a little bit better. I like using zoom box. It's one of my favorite zooms of all time. And uh, can we see the intersection? Let's see. Yep, I can see it. And we got the other intersection. Now we have to make the decision, do we want to integrate this res with respect to X or integrate with respect to Y? And since we're dealing with plus or minus a square root, when this is in X, I would rather work with this equation and work with the Y's. Because uh, we won't have plus or minus when we take the third root of this one. So let's do this with respect to Y. We have the third root of Y is equal to X, and we have X equals Y squared minus two. We're gonna integrate from, well, we gotta find those out. We'll find those out in a second. Uh, the right function is actually the third root of Y. We have the third root of Y and then minus Y squared minus two. So we have it all set up with the, the exception of what to integrate to. We need the, the indexes. So let's find that by uh, doing intersection. We have second calculate. Uh, we're doing number five in intersection. And we can pick this equation, number one and number two. And number one and number two are intersecting up here to the top right. So we'll guess about right there. And that is the, we need the Y values. We need 1.793037. And then we're going to need to get this intersection point over here. Let's go second calculate. Number five is intersection. Let's make sure we're on the right graphs. There, we want number one, but we do not want the second one. We want the third one, so maybe I'll arrow up. That gets me back to one. One more time gets me to the third equation. And then we're going to arrow over a little closer to the intersection point. So there's the guess. Now I need the Y values. And we're going from bottom to top, so I'm going from negative 1 to 1.79. Let's go to the home screen. We have math number 9, and uh, I need the third root. I think I have that in the math, number 4. Third root of x, and then minus, it's really y squared, and then minus 2. And I'm doing this on the variable x, even though in the problem it's on y. And then we're going from negative 1 to 1, 1.793037. Press enter and we'll wait for the answer. Four point two one five.